everyone. Today I thought it would be a good idea to answer that question, what is celiac disease? Now I'm sure most of you watching probably already have a fair idea of what celiac disease is, which is great, but I'm really hoping that this video finds its way to some fresh celiacs, some people who might have celiac disease and need to go get diagnosed, or some people who have family members with celiac disease. But also if you've got celiac disease, you might learn something anyway. This video today is just made from my own research. I'm not a doctor or a specialist, so I'll put all the links of where I found my information in the description box below. Let's jump into it. So firstly, celiac disease isn't an allergy or is it an intolerance? It's an autoimmune disease. If you're unfamiliar with the term autoimmune disease, this describes diseases that occur when your natural body's defense system can't tell the difference between foreign cells and healthy body cells. Remember this part because we're gonna come back to it. And that causes your immune system to mistakenly attack normal cells. Other examples of autoimmune diseases include lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, type one diabetes, and multiple cirrhosis. In fact, there are over 80 different types of autoimmune diseases. And unfortunately, no one really knows for certain why they occur. Some types of autoimmune diseases, however, can be genetically predisposed, like celiac disease. But if you have the gene for celiac disease, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to develop it in your lifetime. So if you have celiac disease, gluten is the foreign cell that sets off your body's immune response. And when that happens, your gut takes a lot of damage. In our gut, we've got these lovely little finger-like velies, which line the entire surface of our intestines, and the purpose of them is to help us digest food more effectively by creating a wider surface area of our intestines. Intestines. However, when a celiac eats gluten, the immune system causes damages to these feelings and actually flattens them, which greatly reduces our ability to absorb nutrients from food. And that is what ends up causing the symptoms of celiac disease. Now, there are over 300 symptoms associated with celiac disease, so I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just going to list the most common ones. Abdominal pain and cramps, bloating, farting, fatigue, constipation, diarrhea, indigestion, vomiting, joint pain, brain fog, anemia, unexpected weight loss, rashes, infertility, and even pins and needles in your hands and feet. There are also symptoms that are more likely to affect children with celiac disease, such as irritability, a short stature, delayed puberty, damage to tooth enamel, swollen bellies, and failure to thrive. On top of this, there are a small portion of celiacs that are actually asymptomatic, who don't experience any symptoms at all, but are still having the damage caused to their gut. As you might have noticed, a lot of these symptoms interchange with other gut-related issues like gluten intolerance and IBS and Crohn's, which is one of the reasons why celiac disease is quite difficult to diagnose. In fact, the average time it takes for someone with celiac disease to get diagnosis from the start of their symptoms is around 13 years. Celiac disease affects around 1% of the population. However, only 30% of that 1% are diagnosed. So that means there are hundreds of thousands of celiacs out there that don't know that they have celiac disease. And this is a massive issue because undiagnosed celiac disease can lead to way more complications in the future, like early osteoporosis, miscarriages, developing lactose intolerance, deficiencies in irons and other vitamins and minerals, nervous system problems, other autoimmune disorders, and sadly, in some cases, gut-related cancers. Yikes, it's been sounding pretty dreary so far. Time for some good news. Unlike a lot of other autoimmune disorders, there is actually a really effective treatment for celiac disease. And I'm sure you know what it is. You can say it with me. A lifelong gluten-free diet. Hooray! <laughs> Removing gluten from a celiac's diet gives the body a chance to heal itself and even those little flattened velies that I mentioned before will eventually spring back up and start absorbing the nutrients again. And because of that, the move to a gluten-free diet should clear up most of your symptoms. It might take a while depending on how long it took your celiac disease to get diagnosed, but you should start to feel better again. Unless you have refractory celiac disease. Refractory celiac disease is when a celiac doesn't respond to a gluten-free diet after a year or so of being on it. Or they seem to start improving with a gluten-free diet, but then get the symptoms later on. Luckily, this is very rare, only about from 0.3% to 4% of celiacs have refractory celiac disease. However, if you are one of those 03 to 4%, it can be incredibly frustrating trying to figure out what to do, especially because there's very little research done on refractory celiac disease. So, what should you do if you think you have celiac disease? Firstly, and most importantly, 
do not remove gluten from your diet until a doctor tells you to. The reason for this is that the only way to diagnose celiac disease currently is through tests that require you to be regularly eating gluten. In most countries, those tests are a blood test and then an endoscopy. However, there are some countries that are trying to go with just the blood test at the moment as it comes back with pretty accurate results. The blood tests are looking for antibodies that are created when their immune system responds to gluten. And if you have a high enough level of these antibodies, you may not need to get an endoscopy to confirm your celiac diagnosis. But if you are asked to get an endoscopy, don't worry, it's a very short, easy procedure where a very small thin tube with a camera at the end is passed down your throat and into your gut to have a look around. They also take a little bit of a biopsy so they can inspect it and see if there's any damage being done because of gluten. It's not as bad as it sounds. A lot of places will put you out for it um, or at least you'll get like numbing gel honestly and it's super quick so you don't need to worry. Throughout this whole diagnostic process you have to continue eating gluten until your doctor or gastroenterologist tells you to stop. And this is another reason why celiac disease is so undiagnosed. A lot of people have been able to figure out that gluten is what is causing their symptoms and have either cut it out themselves or even been told by a doctor to cut it out without first checking for celiac disease. For some people, it's just too difficult to commit to eating gluten again and putting their bodies through that pain and therefore can't get diagnosed for celiac disease, which is totally understandable. I personally could not go back to eating gluten for six weeks. It would be a nightmare. I would just not be able to function. My personal hope is that one day we'll be able to diagnose celiac disease without the need to eat gluten because I think that would give a lot of answers to people who aren't able to get them at the moment. Here's some more rapid fire facts about celiac disease. If you have a close family member with celiac disease, your chances go from one in 100 to one in 10. So if you've got a family member, just go get yourself tested. You can get celiac disease at any age. Depending on where you live, a lot of military won't accept people if they've got diagnosed celiac disease. And there is no cure for celiac disease. Unfortunately, it won't disappear one day. It is a lifelong autoimmune disease. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of an idea of what celiac disease is. And if some of the symptoms I mentioned before are sounding like what you experience, don't be afraid to ask your GP or doctor for a celiac disease test.